I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, happy Monday and welcome back to the news du jour. I wanted to put a little pep in your step this Monday. I know Mondays can be a mess sometimes. We're all scrambling, but we had a short week last week, so we didn't get as much done. And I don't know about you, but I am ready to like hit the ground running today. And I feel like we're going to have a great week. So let's put on our best attitude and hit it hard. Anyway, I have a ton of news stories that are really kind of updates to previous stories for you guys today. So we're going to kind of get caught up on a bunch of different subjects. Let's dive into it. So first up, we're going to talk about Ukraine. So Ukraine is now making progress over Russia. Ukraine is actually making progress against Russia, you guys. It seems that their only real plan of action here is to slowly wear Russia down, drying up all of their resources in this senseless war. Before long, Putin may have to institute a draft in Russia, and that would not only be unpopular, but it would also make it harder for him to deny that they're truly at war with Ukraine, a country where many Russians actually have friends and loved ones living. Let's take a closer look at what exactly has been going on. So essentially what's been going on is that northern cities are now falling to Ukraine. These are the biggest gains that Ukraine has seen since April, you guys, but they have basically started to make progress up in these northern territories that Russia has been occupying. Russia and Ukraine have both formally confirmed that Russian troops have withdrawn from the city of Izium, a city that's com- that's considered to be this sort of logistical hub up in the northern region. And It's got this important railway system there, and that was major for the Russians to take when they first took it. And now the residents that remain in Izium, about 12,000 people, are reportedly in desperate need of humanitarian supplies. Hopefully some UN or UNICEF forces can get in there swiftly and give them some desperately needed help. To further shed some light on what's going on, though, let's discuss kind of like the map in general of Ukraine and like what we're looking at in terms of the Russian occupation and where things are kind of headed. So to get a better idea of what's going on with the war, let's imagine that the country of Ukraine, it's kind of shaped like an egg or like a football. Let's go with the football. If you're looking at the football... The right hand side or like that tip has sort of like a ribbon along the edge of it that is territory occupied by Russia. Okay, so Mariupol and Kyrgyzstan and other cities we have discussed at length on this podcast are all within this sort of eastern ribbon that I'm describing running along the edge of the football. And now Ukrainian forces are slowly liberating cities from the top of that ribbon downward. So they're working along the edge of that football's right corner in a downward trajectory, forcing Russia city by city out of their homeland. I hope that helps paint a bit more of a picture for you guys. And speaking of painting a picture, I wanted to also share a heartwarming story coming out of the war. 
This will paint a silly but sweet picture in your mind, hopefully. A chimp was returned to a Ukrainian zoo on a bicycle in a yellow raincoat. So even amid a literal war, a chimp named Chichi was found wandering around a local park in Ukraine. And zookeepers were called to try to get her home to her habitat in the zoo. At first, it seemed like she was having too much fun in the park to want to go home. But once some light rain began, she ran back to her human friends, put on her yellow raincoat, and hopped on a bike to go home. It was very sweet. We will definitely keep you guys posted with any major updates out of the war in Ukraine. Of course, all of the atrocities are still ongoing, so they're in desperate need of our support, our prayers, and really anything we can do to encourage our leadership to help them, as well as international organizations like the UN and UNICEF. They're the ones really doing the hard work there beyond the Ukrainian military, of course. Anyway, keep them in your thoughts and prayers, and we'll keep you guys updated. Next up for today, we're going to discuss Trump's legal issues. So as we know, former President Donald Trump is facing legal battles on many, many fronts now. His business is under investigation in New York. Potential election interference is under investigation in the state of Georgia. The January 6th committee is looking into his role in the deadly riots The FBI is investigating why many classified documents ended up at his Mar-a-Lago resort. And now, his post-election fundraising is coming under scrutiny, likely in relation to the new charges against Steve Bannon. After losing the 2020 presidential election, you see, Trump and his inner circle created the Save America PAC, which raised money based off the idea that the election was fraudulent. They raised millions of dollars from all across the country, about $135 million to be exact. So now the use of those funds is being investigated by the Justice Department. Subpoenas have now been sent out by a grand jury to a number of mid-level aides from Trump's time in the White House on this subject. It's unclear as of now what the Justice Department really has issue with when it comes to Save America's financials, but that's definitely what they're looking into based on the information laid out in this strange series of subpoenas. Just this past week, there's also been a lot of in-court clashing between the Justice Department and Trump's legal team on who a special master should be for the classified documents case and what their role should be. It's gotten pretty intense and there's just way too much detail um, about this sort of debacle and fight in court for me to go over in today's episode. But essentially, there's been a lot of back and forth in court between the two and when they finally land on who the special master will be and what their role will be we will definitely let you guys know honestly it's important to note that just the sheer amount of money that it's going to take for trump to fight all of these legal battles with his high paid legal team it's it's going to be astronomical which probably has a lot to do with why he has not yet announced his bid for the presidential elections in 2024. These things also kind of creep up before they really hit the newsstand. I mean, you know, in terms of court cases. So Trump and his team have likely known about a lot of these investigations for a while before we did. And there may be other ones percolating that we don't even know about. I would imagine that he's weighing his options very heavily right now and timing his announcements as we speak. We'll keep you guys posted. 
And then to wrap up today's episode, unfortunately, we're going to be covering an update in the Canada stabbings as well as uh, the Memphis shootings first up. So I wanted to go ahead and issue a content warning here. The next two stories involve deadly violence. So unfortunately, there has been yet another mass shooting event in the United States, this time in Memphis. Four are dead and three are wounded after a shooter went on a rampage. The police have not relayed a ton of detail about what went on, but it seems that the likely suspect is a 19-year-old male who surrendered Wednesday night after a car chase with police. The city had urged residents to stay indoors until the killer was found. Luckily, he's now in custody and the city of Memphis will continue to mourn, investigate, and seek justice for those who were harmed. And then before we go, I needed to update you guys about the stabbings in Canada. So if you remember, it was a a brother duo uh, who most likely committed these stabbings and one of them was found killed. Well, the second brother was captured by law enforcement and proceeded to actually pass away in the hospital in Saskatoon due to quote unquote medical distress. I don't have any more detail than that to offer at this time on the nature of his death, but Investigations into the whole incident are ongoing, uh, especially into their motives. He was definitely alive, though, and well enough to stand while being handcuffed by the police when they found him on like a highway. So it's pretty unclear as to what exactly happened to cause his death. But again, if we get any more details on this, we'll definitely let you guys know. In the meantime, the indigenous community in this region of Canada is rejoicing in knowing that they're safe again and that this man is no longer at large. Prayers for peace for all those who are affected. And that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, When life seems hard, the courageous do not lie down and just accept defeat. Instead, they are all the more determined to struggle for a better future. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider becoming a patron of our podcast. For $7.99 a month, you can unlock tons of perks like breaking news text messages so that you're never out of the loop. Tons of bonus episodes are already up there ready for you to binge and a discussion board full of networking opportunities and much more. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash sugar-free media today to become a patron. This is the best way to support our show. Our patrons make news du jour possible. But a couple other ways to support our podcast are rate and review on whatever podcast platform you use to listen, share on your social media, you have influence, tell your friends, family, and colleagues that you love news du jour and why you listen. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram, just sugarfreemedia, all one word on TikTok, and sugarfree underscore media on Twitter. We also have a weekend newsletter called Dreamers Digest that's full of dreamy content recommendations for your weekend and a life update from yours truly. Sign up today on our website, www.sugarfreemedia.co. Our music is by Joey Lavoy and Nicholas Foster. Our cover art is by Hannah Pierce Photography. Our Sugar Free Media logo is by Katherine Jezik Designs. Any twinkling or little footsteps you might hear in the background are by my dog, Rhett. He's a rescue pup and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.